What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, the Royal Rumble has concluded this year, and I must say, for the most part, I definitely enjoyed the show. There were some low points in the show for sure, but there were some incredible highs. When things were fantastic, they were fantastic. We're going to get into it as I give my thoughts and opinions on this year's Royal Rumble. Ultimately, my voice is a little hoarse, so you know that can usually tell you there were some moments i had a fantastic time shout out to everyone that was a part of the royal rumble stream you guys went crazy with just the the views the comments likes we appreciate y'all unfortunately y'all i didn't become the first ever in the clutch champion but i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champion best believe i will be getting that championship from you dub best believe so Enjoy it while it lasts, because that Elimination Chamber, I'm going to become a two-belt champion. Mark my words. But we're going to get right into this. I know you guys want me to talk about a lot of things, so we're going to get right into this. First and foremost, this was a complete shock to me, and I think a lot of people, that the Men's Royal Rumble match started off the show. And part of me is glad that it did, but part of me is also like kind of i guess you can say have mixed feelings in the sense of the match placements because i think the show could have really benefited from maybe the men's royal rumble being in another spot in the show but nevertheless the the first hour and 30 minutes of this show was great this men's royal rumble was in my opinion leagues better than last year i enjoyed this this was fantastic bro like honestly is one of those type of things where I wasn't sure how they were going to book the Royal Rumble this year, but I will say this, they 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 did their thing, man. So, we're going to start with the, the first entrance. I'm not going to go through all the entrances, but I'm going to kind of just uh, talk about just some of the highlights of the actual match. Um, so, Gunther coming out at number one. He was the Iron Man of this match. It was great. To see him, they really were trying to prove the point that Gunther is, you know, potentially going to be a a, a a person to really look out uh, look out for in the future, probably in the main event scene relatively soon. But he was the Iron Man of this match. He was in there for over an hour and 15 minutes, I think, or something like that. It was definitely over an hour. He was the number one person, and he was the last one to get eliminated. So Gunther being the number one and then having Sheamus number two kind uh, coming to the Rumble, Rumble kind of. Uh, the callback to their match at Clash at the Castle. It's pretty cool. Crowd was amped up for this. Um, things started to pick up when uh, Lesnar got in there. When Lesnar got in there, the only thing I can think of is they have to have Bobby Lashley eliminate him. It only makes sense. So, that's what Bobby Lashley does. Bobby Lashley comes out next. He wrecks shops on everybody, spearing people. He, he's pretty much running through people and then he eliminates Lesnar to a huge pop. Lesnar goes crazy on the outside. Baron Corbin comes out next and ends up uh, getting uh, getting fucking destroyed for no reason. And uh, oh, I also want to make a mention. Shout out to Pat McAfee being back on commentary. It was great to have him out there. Commentary tonight was fantastic. I enjoyed them. They were having a great time. Um, but yeah. Bobby Lashley being the one to eliminate Brock in the fashion he did. You know, they're setting up a match probably at WrestleMania. So we will see how that played out. But that was a pretty cool moment. Not going to lie to you. Um, then, of course, Seth getting into the mix. You knew. You knew. We know Cody's going to be there. So at some point, they're going to have their face off to kind of rekindle their feud they had last year. Then Damian Priest. Balor and uh, Dominic are all in the ring. Now, Dominic ends up coming out first, but he ends up attacking his father. It's implied that Rey Mysterio got attacked because I believe he was the entrant number 17, but he never came out. He never came out. He ended up getting attacked or whatnot. It's implied, and then Dominic comes out with his father's mask, ripping it up. So, getting good heel heat there. So, uh, you know, all three members of the Judgment Day are in there. Shout out to Booker T being a, a one of the guest entrants. It was cool to see him hit the spinner Rooney, only to be unceremoniously eliminated. And at this point, we're all waiting for Edge. We're just all waiting for Edge. 
and then that's when Edge comes out and the crowd goes crazy. I go crazy because we all want Edge to give Judgment Day the beats. But ultimately, what ends up happening, Edge gets eliminated fairly quickly as well as uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. They end up getting eliminated as well. And Edge wasn't having it. I loved it. Edge starts attacking him. It's a funny shot of Edge chasing Finn Balor up the ramp. The rampway was like a long pathway. So the cameraman is trying to catch up to him. He's chasing him full speed, catches up to him, starts giving him the beats. And this is probably my favorite moment of the live stream. If you watch uh, the live stream, you already know why. This oh, chef's kiss, this made this Royal Rumble 10 out of 10. Rhea Ripley comes out there, blast uh, Edge in the back of the head. I'm pissed. I'm like, no, not like this. And then all of a sudden, you see Beth Phoenix right behind her. Oh, hits her with a beautiful spear. Oh, chef's kiss. It was so great to see, bro. That was such a great moment. This is not over with them. Best believe Edge is going to get that fade. It's not over with them, and I love it. So, that's something else to look forward to on Monday Night Raw. Um, but other than that, we, you know, other competitors come in, you know what I'm saying, some other notable names. Uh, the fact that Sheamus and Drew was eliminated by Walter or uh, Gunther was very impressive. Once again, Gunther, even though he's taking a lot of naps, Gunther was definitely the Iron Man of this show, of the showing. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get to, obviously, the last person to come in, which was Cody Rose, bro. Cody Rose coming out there. And I know some people were in the comments or in the chat saying it was kind of an anticlimactic thing. Like the pop was there, but it wasn't as, I guess you can say, as big as you would think it would be. Granted, people knew. And I think maybe if they wouldn't have announced him being there and maybe we just automatically assume they don't say it he don't mention it they don't say it even though the crowd probably would have known he's gonna be there kind of like with the edge situation we didn't know but people the dirt sheets were saying he was gonna be there it just wasn't sure i think that probably would have been better a lot of people speculated edge um um can't even think of his name uh cody rose coming back for um um the royal rumble but him announcing it ahead of time maybe took a little bit of the steam out the pop or well, the pop out the steam uh i can't even talk right now but ultimately it came down to oh another but noticeable person i forgot all about it logan paul coming out there a lot of people weren't a big fan of that but one thing about logan it's like when he comes out there you're not a big fan of it and then he does something quite amazing one that him and ricochet both on opposite sides of the ring this is probably the spot of the night honestly they both jump to the top row, do a springboard launch off the top row, both of them, and they collide in midair. It looked like something out of a, a super superhero movie. It was incredible. Like, crowd went crazy, chanting holy S. I was in shock, Dub was in shock. I'm like, bro, they literally collided in midair across the ring. That was a beautiful spot, probably spot of the match for sure. And one thing about Lo Logan, bro, you can't deny his athleticism and it's crazy logan eliminates eliminates seth rollins so maybe they're planning something with seth versus logan at wrestlemania maybe who knows we will see but ultimately logan gets eliminated we're down to the final two and of course it's cody and uh and gunther and they had a match within the match the match was pretty good Granted, of course, they were spent. Gunther was, you could tell he was tired. But Cody's chest was just beat red with those chops. Walt, uh, Gunther, is, he has scars and scratches on his back. He's beaten up. But, bro, that was entertaining. You didn't know which way it was going, but you kind of knew. And ultimately, Cody gets the win, eliminates Gunther, who was the longest uh, entrance at the time, uh, over an hour in the Royal Rumble, in and in at number one. But ultimately, Cody gets the win, and he is going to main event WrestleMania. The question is, how will we get to him 
in Roman Reigns? Will he go for the Universal Championship? Will he go for the WWE Championship? Will he go for both? We're going to talk about that at the end of this video because there's, there's, some, there's some things that could possibly happen here. But overall, this Royal Rumble was fantastic. I had a great time for the Men's Royal Rumble. Fantastic. Love this. I enjoyed this so, so much. All right. Now we're going to get to um, something, a match that had a lot of hype and a lot of expectation but ultimately, it, it it did not live up to it. And that's the Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight uh, pitch black match sponsored by Mountain Dew. Now, I will say this. What made this match probably intriguing is the fact that they pretty much turned down the lights and, was, and everything was glowing in the dark. Like the ring ropes, everything was glowing in the dark. Bray had this type of uh, face paint on that made him glow. His eyes was glowing. Uh, LA Knight's tights was glowing. There was something, there was a, a spot in the uh, in the match, a table spot, where Bray goes through the table, and all of a sudden, the announce table starts splooging out some green, green something, some, some type of substance. It didn't, it, at first I thought it was liquid, but it was some type of paper or whatever, but it was glowing in the dark. It just spilled all over the place. So I was like, uh, I don't know what, anything about that, but the aesthetic of the match was good. It looked beautiful. Like it, it looked like it was something I'd never seen. Like it was just glow in the dark, everything, but it, it looked cool. It looked, the aesthetics was fantastic, but the match didn't live up to it. And then after the match, Bray turn puts on a new mask, and, and then he starts chasing down LA Knight. LA Knight start hitting him with a kendo stick over and over and over. He chases him to this backstage area. Now, at this point, our stream. And the uh, the Peacock app, it just froze. I think it had something to do with the internet at the time. But we was able to check out on Twitter. Apparently, I don't know how this happened. But apparently, he applies, uh, Bray applies the Manimal Claw to LA Knight. And then Uncle Howdy's at the top of this little scaffolding. LA Knight's at the bottom. And uh, El uh, Uncle Howdy proceeds to uh, murder LA Knight. Because when he landed, all of a sudden, randomly, an explosion of fireworks happened around him. So when we came back to the stream, got the stream live, back up again, all we saw was R.I.P. L.A. Night. To be honest with you, keep it a buck. This is months of buildup. I get it. They they pretty much sold out this match for Mountain Dew sponsorship. It's, it was a bag. And I get it. It was probably a very lucrative bag. But um, for Bray Wyatt's first match back, that was not it. It wasn't. I mean, the, the finish to the match, Sister Abigail, but it just came out of nowhere. I thought it was going to be a little bit more. That was it. It was over. I thought they were going to do a little bit more with this match other than just cool black lights. That's it. Once again, match looked cool, but nothing really happened other than L.A. Knight being killed by Uncle Howdy. So, I don't know what you do with Bray, but that I'm a, I gotta be fair here. That wasn't it. For months of no matches, just cryptic promos. That's what we got. I think that may have hurt him. I think we may have needed to see some type of match or something because that did not. It didn't land. So. We will see what they do with uh, Bray going forward. He needs to, I don't know what they do, but that wasn't it. So that, to me, that was a middle, that was, if it if it didn't have the, the fancy theatrics and the, the glow in the dark stuff, this match would probably definitely be lower uh, grading wise for me personally. But this is like the middle of the road. I just don't know what to say about it. So yeah, that, that did not live up to the hype. All right, we got the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss. This was, uh, oh yeah, this I, I didn't care. <laughs> it, it sucks. It sucks because I could tell right away, obviously, Alexa Bliss wasn't winning this. Even with her supernatural powers trying to come back, she wasn't winning this shit. She wasn't. The match didn't really do much for me. It was okay, but I, I didn't. There was not at one point where I was like, oh, oh, Bianca's in trouble. Like, it was just like, let's, 
this was more set up for what we're going to talk about later uh, for the Women's Royal Rumble. But this, this seemed like just a stepping stone. So, yeah, this match, you can see this on Monday Night Raw. Honestly, this this was a Monday Night Raw caliber match. I feel like Alexa Bliss, you know, they, of course they went with that route, but I feel like somebody could have been a better opponent for Bianca Belair, but this wasn't it. Granted, the women's division in WWE is 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 lackluster in a in a sense of talent, main roster wise. So uh, I don't know, but it was okay for what it was. But it's a match I I, I think probably would have worked better on a Monday Night Raw, but uh, Bianca Belair um, winning. Uh, winning the match here and I don't know what they're gonna do with Bray's like the tying in Bray and, and Alexa's maybe they do you know Bray did win his match Alexa lost her match I don't know uh if they trying to you know do something because at the end of the match Alexa looking at the screen you see Uncle Howdy and it's all types of stuff creepy imagery I don't know what they're trying to say there maybe she links up with him again I don't know we will see but uh yeah that was kind of um middle of a road match not something that i would definitely look go back to watching and this was definitely a low point of the pay-per-view for sure man uh so yeah maybe they do do something with brace like i said he did win his match alexa lost hers they connected with uncle howdy maybe something happens there so we'll see all right women's royal rumble match now this one has some highs and some lows it was okay um Obviously, it wasn't as good as the men's. The men's was fantastic. This one was okay. I think maybe they would have started to show with the women's match. Women's match, it probably went, maybe would have got a better reception. But ultimately, it was it it wasn't it wasn't bad by any means. I, I this this one this one was it had some good moments for sure. Um, so Rhea Ripley coming off at number one, selling the the spear injury or uh, the spear. Uh, you know to her ribs so she's selling that but once she came out at number one i'm like oh yeah they're setting this up she's gonna she's definitely going to be the person to be the iron woman in this match and ultimately she was um oxa i say oscar oscar coming out there huge pop huge reaction people were definitely behind uh oscar when she uh arrived um her early favorite was roxanne perez now i know she's the nxt women's champion but the reception she got in the type of offense she was able to get in crowd was really hyped about her and they were upset when she ended up getting eliminated that was that was another high moment of course dakota kai eo sky and bailey being in the match so you knew they were going to do their heel like shenanigans the only thing people were really waiting for with them is becky lynch becky lynch comes out huge pop crowd's ready becky's ready to go rogue she starts giving them the beats she ends up getting thrown over the announce table but it's not the end of her as well um more women start coming in Zia Lee had a nice little uh performance as well what was really cool Dewdrop formerly known Dewdrop Piper Niven as she went by in the independent scene she made her return uh it, I'm, I'm glad Triple H changed the name that Dewdrop shit that uh, it was so cringe I didn't like it it just kind of it, it didn't even make me take her character seriously. I've seen some of her work in a, on the independent scenes, and she comes off way more as a, a badass, especially with the name Piper Niven. It works. So the fact that he changed her name, I can appreciate that. That was a pretty cool moment just to see that. Um, but I want to talk about uh, Michelle McCool being out there the entire show, and then all of a sudden her her music hit so she just hops the barricade behind the announce table and gets into the match she had a nice little showing um but obviously the, the uh, one of the big storylines in this match was bailey and becky and pretty much uh they eliminate um uh becky lynch they eliminate becky lynch and then bailey and um um, damage control they end up getting eliminated themselves and it just becomes a huge brawl on the outside it was such a cool moment and it looks like they're going to be continuing that feud going on it um into monday night raw so we'll see how that play out um but we we finally get to like the last four 
um we get to um i believe it was uh was it nikki cross i think i think it was like nikki cross Liv morgan uh actually yeah it was like nikki cross Liv morgan um oscar and rhea ripley i could be wrong on that I, shit just happened i already forgot <laughs> i believe it was one they were uh yeah nikki cross oscar Lil Morgan, Rhea Ripley. They were the last four because Nia Jax was entrant number 30. She's back. Heard the remover, r- rumors. Pretty much, she came back. Everyone ganged up on her and got her the fuck up out of here. That, that was it. A lot of people are saying that's a waste of a spot. I can agree with that to that to an extent. Could have had her somewhere else. But either way, she got the fuck up out of here. So it ended up being those four ladies. And um, what was crazy about this situation is you could tell you can tell where things was going uh nick cross getting eliminated then all three women uh, uh remaining women oscar uh Rhea, and Liv was on the outside of the uh ropes uh of the ring like on the apron area uh oscar sprays uh hits uh the mist uh spits the mist into Liv morgan's face oscar ends up getting eliminated by Rhea ripley Rhea ripley's barely holding on um Liv Morgan is trying to get uh, um, Rhea off the ropes, and Rhea ends up throwing her out. With uh, I believe it was like, it was, I don't know how she was, she was able to flip her using her legs or whatever. But the most important part about this is Rhea being the Iron Woman, and it started at number one and lasted all the way through. I kind of saw that how that was happening because it was like, yeah, she it, it makes sense, and they're setting it up. Obviously, I can see them doing Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. I think that's what's going to happen here. Rhea Ripley, uh, Bianca Belair. It's happening. It's happening. And honestly, I think Rhea Ripley is going to become the new champion at WrestleMania. It makes sense. Bianca's had a, a pretty cool reign, but I think it's time to give the belt to Rhea Ripley in this form. Her heel gimmick, I think it's going to work. I think it is. So, I, I think that's obviously what they're setting up for. And I think they could put on a good match. I do believe they can put on a good match. It's going to be interesting to see what mind games Rhea Ripley plays with Bianca Belair. It's going to be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to seeing how they set this up. This Once again, this Women's Royal Rumble was okay. I think it probably would have fit better at the beginning of the show. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. Uh, even though at this point, it was like, damn near almost 11 o'clock our time central standard time um damn near almost 12 o'clock on the east coast they're over here performing doing a, a concert before the main event hey it was it's a cool song for the theme of uh, the royal rumble but we ain't got time for that let's get to the goddamn main event so none speedy wwe universal championship on the line roman versus kevin owens now we knew roman was gonna win it was the question of what is what are they going to do with Sammy? The storyline here. This was the most important thing about this. It wasn't the match itself, it's the storyline. Because we knew they get they didn't they started off the show with the men's Royal Rumble. So that means you gotta give you have to give them time to do something. Something's happening at the end of this match. It's not just gonna be a match and then that's it. Cut to credits. They're doing something, obviously. And they boy did they do something great. This match was fun. Typical Roman Reigns match starts off slow, methodical, and then it builds. The only person that was out there in Roman's corner was Sammy and uh, and Paul Heyman. So this was great. Match was building up as we expect. There's a couple close near falls where you think, could he do it? Granted, you know it's not going to happen. And here's the crazy thing about this. Here's the crazy thing about this. Roman showed his brutality that, and I really appreciated it. There's one point in the match, referee obviously gets knocked down, and Roman's like, give me a chair. Sammy's like, well, you told me not to, and Roman's like, bro, I don't give a damn. Give me a chair right now. So he ends up going for a chair or whatnot. Obviously, it took a little, it was a little bit of hesitation, took a little bit more time, but Kevin Owens, um, you know, ends up being able to counter off of that, but he doesn't get the pin because the referee's out 
you know so i'm like all right well you know we've seen this before but it was still good crowds getting into it you know they're, they're starting to get more hype because these near falls are looking like it could be over the turning point in this match where i knew okay we gotta throw up the x for my boy kevin owens we go to the outside right this is when roman just went rogue like just completely rogue the steps steel steps you know set up to for the wrestler to get into the ring he proceeds to throw uh, Kevin Owens back and head first into the edge of the steps. The first time was brutal. Sammy's selling like, yo, what the fuck? Then he does it a second time. I'm like, oh, pay this nigga Kevin Owens all the money. Kevin Owens is willing to take spots and bumps that most of us would never willingly do. Brutal as hell. At that point, I'm like, bro, the match has to be over, right? Hits him with the spear. One, two, three. I'm like, okay. That was a fun match. It, it really picked up at the end, but then it it, 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 it got rolled very quickly. That steel uh, chair spot, no, steel stair spot, it's just brutal when you watch it. Like, it's just, there's nothing about that that just looks comfortable. So, at this point, Kevin knows is dead, right? Bloodline comes out there. They're about to, you know, I guess, coordinate. Or put, you know, Sammy, I guess, passed his test. They about to, you know, give him flowers. I'm not sure the exact name of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But Roman's like, not yet. So they proceed, and I mean proceed to beat the living crap out of a lifeless Kevin Owens. I mean super kick, punches, kicks, punches. They're beating the crap out of him. They're not showing no mercy, and Sammy's just sitting there like, conflicted they're decimating him it was beautiful oh my god crowd is booing crowd is not loving this they are literally trying to kill this man on 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 television it was sensational then they bring out the handcuffs i'm like bro well actually no there was a you know the i had to mention this they bring out the chair put the chair around kevin owens neck on one of the turnbuckles in the corner they do the the um the solo spot where solo's been out here trying to end niggas careers and guess what they do that to a lifeless kevin owens now you're thinking okay the segment's over sammy's like kind of just like not enjoying this but no it gets worse they bring out handcuffs i'm like no no okay kevin owens has had enough he does have a family roman like we get it you won Hangs him up to the top rope with the handcuffs. And Jimmy and Jay, they just proceed to super kick him to oblivion. I mean, they're just kicking him over and over and over. They're punching him over. He's lifeless at this point. So now they get the chair. Roman gets a chair. He's about to send him. I mean, well, he's already in the upper room. At this point, it's just a shell. His soul, see, Kevin Owens' soul has left his body. It's been gone. It started to leave when he got his head uh, smashed into the corner of the steel steps. It was done there. His soul has already left his body at this point. So now Roman is just beating up an empty shell, right? He's about to end him. He's about to end him. Sammy steps in. Crowd is wanting Sammy to do something right here. Sammy steps in. He's like, all right, that's enough, Tribal Chief. You you proved it. He's done. He's done. He's over. You That's beneath you, right? He's trying to save him. Roman's like, you know what? You're right. I want you to do it. And the, oh my God, this is so good storytelling, bro. I want you to end him. He's telling him, bro, he's been holding you back for years. You don't need him. You're with us now. You're part of us now. Do it. Unless you want to be doing the jackass skits all the time. And I love that. I love how he brought up Sami Zayn doing the jackass stuff last year at last year's WrestleMania. Like, that's beneath you now. I love that. Sami's conflicted. I'm, I'm at the edge of my seat. This is prime storytelling right here. And the way they frame the camera. Roman Reigns' back is turned. Sami has the chair. And then at one point, Roman is like pushing Sami and getting in his face. Like, do it. Sammy picks up that chair, 
He's about to swing it. And I think a lot of us were just waiting for it. And uh, I will say this. Sami Zayn, you got that dog in you, bro. Because you knew you was about to get your ass beat once you once you swung that chair. And he swung it like, like only Sammy could swing it. Like he knew this is where it ends for me, y'all. He swung that chair. Roman was shocked. Everyone was shocked. And boy, the beats they gave him. Oh, man. They beat the crap out of Sammy. I mean, they brutalized him. They brutalized him. And the crowd was hurt. I was hurt. Dub was hurt. Oh, it was so sad to see. They're just beating the living crap out of him. Kicks, stomps, punches. Even they lift him up so Solo can hit the Samoan spike. Boom, out of there. Oh, my God, so good. They're ripping off the honorary Ooh shirt, bro. But here's the thing that you don't rip, like you start to notice. Jay's not in on this. Jay's in the corner. Everyone else is giving him the beats, but Jay's not doing it. Jay's conflicted. Oh, and that was such a good twist. That was so fucking good because Jay's in the corner and he won't do it. They're looking at him like, what you doing? He's like, I can't do it. And he walks out. He walks away, bro. Everyone's like, what are you doing? They're confused. The crowd's going crazy. He walks away. He can't do it. It's going to be interesting what they do with that. So Roman turns it up even more. He's like, bro, this is your fault. And he beats the crap out of him with their steel chair. I mean, he starts. First, he gives them the fist, like beating them with the fist. And then he, the ground and pound, and he beats the living crap out of him over, over, over with the chair shots. It was brutal, and I loved it. It got to the point where he got 51,000 people chanting f you roman f you roman that's when you know you got him and honestly that was great and that's how you end off the show kevin owens destroyed sammy sammy zane destroyed that was great the at that last segment in my opinion enhanced the show even more it started off fantastic with the men's royal rumble and it ended off even better with that last match. Last match was pretty good. Standard Roman Reigns match. Starts off slow. Gets really pretty good. You know, a couple false finishes. But ultimately, still entertaining to watch. That last 15 to 20 minutes of the brutality. Chef's kiss. I loved it. I loved it. And now I'm hyped for Monday Night Raw. I am hyped for SmackDown. I don't. I want to see what happens. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Now we're getting somewhere. And I do think um, maybe they'll write them off television because they got their ass beat. So I don't know if they're going to appear on SmackDown. But I do think it's not that time. There's dissension in the butt line now. Once again, started with uh, Jimmy now. I mean with Jay. And now I think Sammy... And Kevin Owens, they're going to team up. And I think they're probably going to go for the tag titles. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know. But I, I, I think they're going to team up and they're going after the bloodline. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Sammy was already a mega baby face. Already he was super over. He's going to get even more over than what he is now because of this brutal. And I've called it and I've called it. When it's time for Sammy to get excommunicated out of the bloodline it gotta be brutal this was great ultimately i had a fun time my head hurts from all the yelling i had a fantastic time that was a great way to end the show and you didn't need the rock you know some people are almost disappointed the rock you know you, know, you didn't need the rock this story is good enough on its own don't need the rock to convolute it if he can be there cool if he can't I personally, now, I don't care if he comes or not. Because this right here, Sammy getting his get back, the downfall of the bloodline, I'm looking forward to. And Cody Rhodes is now your Royal Rumble winner. We're, make, we're probably going to get some promos, some things lined up. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hey, 
Overall, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to have to get this pay-per-view. This for me. The last, the first segment in the last, uh, the first Royal Rumble match in the last match and segment damn near saves a lot of this show. Because everything in the middle was mid to don't care. Outside of the Women's Royal Rumble, which was somewhat entertaining for the most part. If I have to be honest, I'll probably give it an 8. After thinking about it, because I know on the review, I, I gave it a 9 out of 10. But really, when I think about it, I'm only, if I was to go back and watch this Royal Rumble, I'm only going to really watch the Men's Royal Rumble. I'd probably skip through the Women's Royal Rumble to see, you know, some cool parts. And then I'm watching the last match in this segment. So, I would give it an 8 out of 10. 8 and a half out of 10. It was fun. It was fun. This this was fun. It's just certain matches on there couldn't live up to, you know, obviously the Men's Royal Rumble. And then that end of the segment was fantastic. I see why they went live uh, last. 8 out of 10 for me. I enjoyed it for what it was. It could have been better. You know, I was hoping it was going to be a 9 or a 10, but those middle matches didn't really live up to where it could have been. Hell, it could have been one match that was, like, not as good, but if everything else was good to great, I definitely would have gave this a 9 or a 10 out of 10 Royal Rumble. But for now, after thinking, after finally calming down and really thinking about it, I'm going to give this 8.5 out of 10 Royal Rumble. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of the night. What was your uh, what was your thoughts when Sammy and, and Kevin Owens were getting sent to the upper room? Oh, let me know how y'all felt about that. And where do you guys think this story is going to go with Sammy and Kevin Owens when they come back to get they lick back? Where do you think this is going to play uh, into the WrestleMania scene? And, well, the main event WrestleMania scene. And also, what they're going to do with uh jay uso how's that gonna play out i want to get y'all uh y'all thoughts and comments on where you think these future storylines are going to go and also what was like i said what was your favorite match and what you rate the show on a scale of one to ten did you enjoy it or did you feel like it could have been a lot better let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and of course i may not be your in the clutch champion for now but i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.